So let's see what happens if I'm going to plot a function now that has an intercept. So let me take my original function y equals to x and let me put an intercept, let's say three. Okay, what, one thing that rather you should notice here is that this three makes an, uh, some changes. This function was here, right? So the question is what has happened? What has happened is that somehow it has moved actually, we can say three units up, okay? Which consequently uh, has led the function to move three units to the left? That's what we are seeing here. Now, I want you guys to start thinking about this really even algebraically. If I, I'm going to give you a function and, and I'm gonna to say to you, well, this function is x minus one, then what you should know is, okay, you are actually having a mother function y equals to x, then you are taking it one unit, then one unit down. Okay, so let's see if that is the case, if I plot this function, y, is equal to x and I say minus one. So has that happened? Yes, it has happened. Let's see again, uh, maybe let me change the color of this function, make it pink there. So let's see first, y equals to x. There is y equals to x. Now let's put a minus one, negative one. You can see it has actually moved one unit from there to here okay so this is why we call it the y-intercept we call it the y-intercept because it is actually on the y-axis and it is at a point where x is actually zero the x coordinate is zero now so if you want to know the easiest and the simplest way to plot a function now you better watch what Mr. G is going to do right now. If you want to know the simplest and the easiest way to plot a function, this is what you need to do. Watch and learn. If I'm going to give you any function, random function, say um, the function uh, y is equal to 2x plus uh, 7, you need a uh, you can simply use what we call the intercept method. Now, you're gonna be taught about the table method and all that, I'm not a fan of that. The reason is simple, the lazy mathematician does not want to waste time. So the first thing that I'm gonna do really is to find the x-intercept. What, what do I know about the x-intercept? The x-intercept, actually, I must set y to be zero. So I've got the following. In the equation y equals to 2x plus 7, if I set y to be 0, I'm having 2x plus 7. Now, if I solve for x, then I see that x is actually negative 7 over 2. That's what x is. Then I move on to find the y-intercept. This is, guys, the easiest ways to plot any function. Set x equals to zero because I'm looking for the y-intercept. Now again, y is 2x plus seven. So y is two into zero plus seven. So, and this is just a zero, so I'm left with a seven. Now, what is the coordinate here? Remember I said y to be zero. So the coordinate is negative seven over two and a zero. Here, I set x to be zero and then y happened to be seven. Now. Let's see if I've done the right thing here. I'm gonna plot this graph. Y equals to two X plus seven. There it is. Now let us see if I will get these coordinates that I have found algebraically. There is zero and seven. I hope you can see that already. I will go ahead and ask your algebra to show us the coordinates so that you guys can see I'm not fooling you. Um, <coughs> uh, okay, let me actually do this. Let me name that point and also name this point of intersection. Um, so 
um, actually now what what this thing has done is that it has showed the uh, the coordinates. So, but let me go ahead and be generous and show you that there it is zero and seven. Did I find zero and seven in my calculations? Yes, here it is. Let's see here. Again, <laughs> you may say um, um, this one is what minus three over five minus 3.5 and 0 and of course 3.5 is 7 over 2 so i am um, this is that is still the correct thing so what you guys would do ideally what you guys would do is that you would actually uh, find the intercepts then plot them on your cartesian plane after plotting them you then just join the two lines let me quickly illustrate this before i end this video so <laughs> this is how you will plot it. Here is another graph. Let's say, suppose you want to plot the graph y equals to minus x plus 4. So um, I was not supposed to plot this one. So it's fine. I, it's plotted, but let's find another one. y equals to uh, minus 2x plus 3. So first of all, if I find the x-intercept, I know y will be zero. So if I solve this, you can see that now x will be three over two, which is one and a half. So my coordinate is three over two and zero. The next one, y intercept, I set x to be zero. My coordinate then I, so yeah, x equals to be is zero. And so what am I doing here now? There y was zero. So if x is zero, I can see that now I'm going to have zero and three because this one is just obvious. It's, it's given there. So let me find the point zero and three, okay? Uh, zero and three is here. And what is the point three over two and zero? It's, it's somewhere here, right? Somewhere there, just somewhere there. So uh, let me just see if I can actually find that point. And I just want to find that point. Let me bring my grid. Um, yes, here is the point. So I'm going to uh, find my points and I'm going to plot my graph. I'm going to plot the graph so that you guys can see. So on the x-axis, it must pass from 1.5. And on the y-axis, it must pass at 3. There is my graph. So this is what you guys will do in an exam. Um, and now I can confirm with GeoGebra if this graph is correct by just saying y equals to uh, minus 2x uh, plus 3. You can see it. Here is the graph. It flows exactly on my red line here. So here it is. It even continues down. So you can see that this intercept method works quite well and quite fast. This is what I'd advise you guys to do if you have to plot graphs. I hope you have enjoyed this and you see the effect of the y-intercept. Send me a message or so. Put a question in the group chat if you've got questions. Cheers.